Hello out there, everybody. My name is David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Now, welcome to a special edition of Financial Bin Radio covering the Google stock split. You know, at the Financial Bin, we focus on personal finance and entrepreneurship for Generation Y. However, when major news like this comes out, we want to make sure we keep you guys up to date, keep you informed, and help you understand what's going on. Now, to do this, we invited Riskalyze CEO Aaron Klein to help us walk us through the situation and the fallout, how it's going to affect Google. Aaron, welcome to the Financial Bin Radio, and thanks for joining us in such short notice. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Let, let's just jump right into it. Now, uh, kind of from a general perspective, Aaron, what, what is a stock split? And, and kind of give it to us in layman's terms, if you can. <laughs> sure. You know, a stock split is a, is a typical thing a company will, will do when the stock gets up to a certain price. Google is trading at about $630. And, you know, when, when a stock gets up to, to that kind of price level, it, it starts to become difficult. Frankly, when a stock gets up past $200, <laughs> uh, it, it can often become difficult for an individual investor to really use it in their portfolio. It starts becoming uh, difficult to, to rebalance effectively you know, with, with uh, trades and commissions and different things like that. So, and just basic affordability. So a stock split, you know, traditionally, and, and I know we'll get into this, this is like not a very traditional kind of stock split, but a traditional stock split, a two-for-one, simply means that when the market closes, let's make the math simple and say that Google was at $600, uh, the, the, you know, the day of the split, the market closes. The next morning when it opens, the stock will be at $300, but you'll have twice as many shares in your account. So you're kept whole but now the stock price is lower. It's a little bit more manageable, uh, and and you've got twice as many shares uh, to rebalance or adjust your portfolio with. Now, as you mentioned, uh, what Google's doing is a little bit different. So can you take us through, give, maybe give us a quick overview of what they're doing and then maybe what you feel or what you think they feel they hope to ex- expect to accomplish as a result of this not-so-contemporary uh, uh, split? Yeah, it is very different. What Google is actually doing is they're creating a new class of stock that uh that that has no voting power. And so, you know, traditionally when you when you own a company, if you take a company with uh, a single class of stock, right? You're you're going to have one share, one vote. And so what that means is the holders of 50% plus one share can control who the board of directors is, therefore can control who the CEO is, the basic direction of the company. But you know, Google is is one of the one of the companies you know in, in a relatively small but fast growing group of companies that say we want to to go into the public markets and access the capital of the public markets, but we want to we, we want to try to avoid being chained to uh, a quarterly outlook. We want to have a long term view of things, and to do that. Um, you know they have they have created these multiple classes of stock. They did it at the at the very beginning with their IPO, and they were very clear at the very beginning with their IPO that with two classes of stock, they were going to to keep control of Google in the hands of its founders, uh, Sergey and and Larry, uh, and and that was going to be their approach. And they were they were very clear and upfront about that in their IPO documents in their letter to shareholders. And so they're doubling down on that approach now. In effect, what they're doing with this stock split, by creating this new class of of shares that, in effect, double the number of shares outstanding of Google, uh, it's going to have the same effect of cutting Google's price in half, but these new shares that every investor is going to get have no voting power. So what it's doing is it's preserving or sort of doubling down on this idea of, of preserving the control of the company in the hands of the founders. So, I, you know, from my perspective, um, it really uh, sort of focuses our thoughts about this stock as a bet on these founders. If you believe that these founders have a long-term vision that makes sense and that is going to build a, a wildly valuable company, uh, then it's a, it's a great company to be a part of, even though your voting control may be reduced, Right. Uh, if, if you're concerned about that, um, then it's not the right stock for you to be in. And this is why they they communicate this up front and communicate it very clearly so the investor can make that kind of choice. You know, there's a handful of companies that 
uh, whether or not they're doing multiple classes of stock, have been very clear with the markets that they are long-term focused and they are not, they're not going to be chained to this quarterly schedule of trying to show earnings growth every quarter. I would put Amazon in that category. I would put Google definitely in that category. Facebook is going to be in that category. They've communicated that as well. Uh, and, you know, Apple to some extent is in that category as well. They're, they're not having any trouble <laughs> showing the consistent quarterly earnings growth, obviously. So, Absolutely. So, you know, that, that's, I, I think that's the challenge and the question for investors. Most of the, of, of the users that we work with at Riskalyze are, are really sort of long-term investors. They're not short-term traders just looking to get in to a trade and then get out 30 days later. They're looking for that kind of long-term growth and long-term value, and, and that's why I think we see Google consistently as one of the, uh, one of the most popular stocks on Riskalyze. Now, maybe just in general, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but how do you kind of see this playing out with uh, with Google, you know, in terms of maybe the investors as they are now and then also, um, you know, new investors? I don't think Google is going to have any trouble attracting capital. Uh, I think that they've got, they've got a hugely uh, powerful and popular search franchise. They've got one of the best email products there is out there. Um, you know that they're they're they've got the best mapping product at this point. They have they certainly have some strategic challenges. You know I, I I don't think that they've nailed social. I think that they've had some some stumbles along the way with social. Um, but but you start looking at some of their bets ten years out with things like self driving cars, which frankly I really badly want one. Okay. Uh, and, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and. And you know, and and the whole thing of Project Glass with the wearable computers and things like that. Google is is a very rare company, and I just my my you know prognostication for Google. I'm long Google, definitely. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they are going to ever be like the preeminent social company, uh, and and sort of displace Facebook um, in the way that some of their recent product moves have sort of tried to do. Uh, I don't think that they need to defeat Facebook to be incredibly valuable and a really important piece of our lives. So I, I'm definitely, you know, I, on an individual basis, I don't own the stock personally, but I'm long Google. I think it's, uh, I, I think it's a, a great company. I think they're managing for the long term. And, and see, from my perspective, I want to be, um, uh, if, if I'm buying these kinds of stocks. I want to be with companies that have that long-term perspective and are saying we're not going to be chained to a quarterly planning cycle. We're, we're, we're going to build for the long term, and we're going to build sustainable long-term value. We've seen Amazon do it. I think we've seen Google do it in the past, and I think we'll continue to see Google do it in the future. You know, Aaron, I, you brought up the, the, the social aspect and how Google Plus isn't exactly – uh, let's just say it's kind of missing its mark a little bit, you know. And with the right. Facebook acquisition of uh, Instagram, do you see maybe uh, a face? Uh, I'm sorry, a Google Play for maybe Pinterest or something like that. You know, it's really interesting to me because I've always thought when when I look at Google Plus and and how they tried to build sort of a big bang alternative to Facebook. I think that they made a misstep, frankly, and this is just my opinion, but I think they made a misstep by trying to build sort of this big bang competitor. If I were them, I would have built a product called Google Plus One, right, which basically was uh, uh, a, a, you know, sort of a Pinterest-like small wedge product that could have expanded uh, you know, not, not try to take over all of our all of our social lives, but just done that a little bit more effectively and slowly. Um, right. But you know that that is the approach they've taken. I would I would be surprised if Google doesn't make a play for Twitter, frankly, mm, uh, in the next point. two years. I don't know if Twitter will sell, but those two companies I think have the same kind of DNA. And the, the way that Twitter, uh, that the Twitter network works, I think, fits so incredibly well with Google and Google Search. So sure. I think it's a, it's a match made in heaven, but uh, we'll see if it ever comes to being. Well, Aaron, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. That was Aaron Klein, CEO of Riskalyze, weighing in on the Google stock split. And... Uh, Talking a little bit about what could potentially be down the, down the road for the company, um, make sure to check them out 
at uh, riskalize.com. You can check out Aaron and follow him on Twitter at Aaron Klein and also at Riskalize. Uh, I appreciate you joining us for this special edition of Financial Bin Radio covering the Google stock split. Till next time, make sure to join us on financialbin.com. I'm David Domzowski. Thanks for listening.